Red lips curled into a smile. Pale hand gently tucked jet black hair behind an ear. Black nail polish slightly chipped. She seemed nervous, of course. This was the first time she'd let me in. Her name was Hope. She was 21 and broken. I was 24 and much the same. She entered my life at a time where all I could do was sleep. I was so angry at everything. I'd wake up at nights and cry myself back under. Everything like a bad dream. It was winter, and she seemed so beautiful and warm. We were out for coffee, sitting by a large window and listening to the freezing rain. We laughed each time people slipped on the ice. Hours felt like minutes, mugs warm in our hands. The middle of the story, she stopped, smirked, she mouthed the words, you're gonna be in trouble. And I was, that relationship was shit. <laughs> Tried to go back and think about times that were simple and easy and not complicated at all. And earliest memories went back to 1994 when I first experienced my first super deep depression. Writing the words, I'm not like them, but I can pretend on everything that I could. I remember the day that Kurt Cobain died. I can't have actual fire here, so we're gonna pretend that I'm lighting this candle right now. Okay, it's lit. I was nine and in the fourth grade. I was stomping home from school in my boots, humming whatever stupid song was stuck in my head, purposely stepping on every crack on the sidewalk. I walked up the driveway, past flowers I could never remember the names of, past the planter that had my name on it. The front door was already open. My family knew I was gonna be home soon. I pulled open the screen, threw my backpack on the ground, and walked toward the mirror in the bathroom. I had an idea for the color I wanted my hair to be when my family would finally let me dye it. I wanted, the, I wanted to look in the mirror and imagine it, electric blue, like a comic book character. I pictured blue dreads emerging from my scalp like snakes and it framed my face, the bounce, the texture, full, fluffy, wild. My aunt walked up behind my reflection. I made fish lips and looked at her through the mirror. Her arms were crossed and she looked serious. I looked down and played back my entire day, trying to think of what I could have done to be in trouble. Coming up blank, I made another goofy face at her in the mirror. Kurt Cobain died. I told her to be quiet. Her joke wasn't funny. See. This aunt liked to play jokes. We went to Disneyland once, and we were on Haunted Mansion. She kept tapping the back of my head. And when I called her out on it, she said it wasn't her. She said it was the ride. And so I turned around and looked at the back of the car the entire ride. I didn't even see what ghost was in her buggy. By the time we got off the ride, she laughed at me and said that I was gullible. I told her she wasn't funny then. She wasn't funny now. Just before dinner, I walked through the living room toward the crate that held my coloring supplies. My aunt ran in and turned on the TV. Ella, look. The news was on. Kurt Cobain, dead at 27, was on the ticker on the bottom of the screen. Footage of police tape, a window, a gray blanket over someone's feet, flowers, sea of people crying, candles, people sad. Pictures of Kurt. It was suicide. I didn't even know what that was yet. My aunt explained it to me like I wasn't a child. He was only 27. I was so transfixed by the broadcast to the point that her hand on my shoulder made me jump. My aunt crouched down and asked me if I was okay. I blurted out the words, I hate you, and I ran into my room. I found my Walkman and slid the foam-covered headphones on. I had just gotten in utero and cassette, and it lived in my head. I turned up the volume all the way. On the nightstand beside my bed, there was a music magazine with a gate-folded poster of Cobain. I tore it out and leaned with it against the wall, imagining that I was resting my head on his shoulder. When Nirvana's dumb came on, I started to cry. I felt like my future was slipping away. See, when I grew up, I was gonna meet Kurt Cobain. I would be an adult and he would still be the same age. I was gonna have a ton of tattoos and crazy blue hair, which is not far off at all. Um, <laughs> and he was going to fall in love with me and we'd talk about music and he'd teach me how to play guitar and we'd write songs about how much people sucked. We'd travel the world and we'd be happy. And now none of that was ever gonna happen. Poster got soggy from my tears and it stuck to my face. I kept repeating that I was sorry, like it was somehow my fault. At school the next day, everyone seemed normal, like nothing was wrong. They ran, they played, they acted up. I sat on a bench with my back to the school, staring at the chain link fence and the bike path that ran on the other side of it. I thought about climbing the fence and running along the path, running until my legs turned to jelly, running until I couldn't run anymore kept staring at the fence, daring myself to ditch school. 
My best friend Mensa saw me out there and she came to sit next to me. Did you hear about Kurt? She had also been certain she would marry him when she was old enough. <laughs> Not a day went by where a conversation didn't start with, when I grow up, Kurt and me. <laughs> yeah. I looked down at my beat up Skechers. Sucks. She was staring at her shoes too. Did you wear your teen spirit today? I nodded. Did you? Mensa nodded and showed me the deodorant stick in her jacket pocket. Even though it was 75 degrees outside, Mensa always wore a light coat. She would tell people that she wore one because she always felt cold, but I knew that she wore one to hide that she would cut herself. I wondered if she had been doing that today. So who are you going to marry now, I asked her. I don't know. I still love Nirvana, so maybe somebody else in the band. Dave's kind of cute. <laughs> I nodded. Anthony, a kid in our class, snuck up behind us. Kurt's dead. There's no more Nirvana. He thought he was being funny, and he pointed and laughed at us. You dummies. Take that back, Mensa said. She stood from her bench, or she stood from the bench, balling her fists. I don't think I'd ever seen her so angry. And the way he said it and seeing her reaction, I ran over and kicked him in the shin as hard as I could. And then he fell and started crying, said he was going to tell like that meant something. I didn't care. I spit on the blacktop beside him. There was no punishment they could give me that was worse than this. At least that's how it felt. Mensa tugged on my arm and pointed at the teacher that was running toward us. She said that we should go because I was going to be in trouble for what I had done. But I didn't move. I waited. There was no use in running. She knew which class I was in anyway. Teacher yanked my arm and walked me back to the building. The bell rang, ending recess. I glanced back toward the blacktop and saw Mensa standing by herself, watching me get taken away. The principal asked if I kicked Anthony, and I said I did. He asked why, and I said because he was mean. Then he asked if I spit on Anthony, and I said no. He said that the teacher saw me spit on Anthony, and I said I spit on the ground next to him, but I didn't spit on him, and that that teacher was a liar. He called my family and sent me back to class, where I had to stand in the back of the room, face the, back, or face the wall until school was over. When the bell rang, the teacher had me sit down at my desk and write standards. I will not kick or spit on other people, 50 times. Having to write a false confession made me hate Anthony more, made me hate the school. Later, I asked my aunt what would happen to the band now that Kurt Cobain was dead. She told me that they would either find a new singer or stop making music. I said, if they get a new singer, it won't be them anymore. She said, that's not necessarily true. Then she went on to talk about other bands that changed singers throughout their runs, but I stopped listening because I didn't care. <laughs> the following two weeks, I kept to myself, not really feeling hungry, forcing myself to eat. I didn't want to play during recess anymore, so I'd sit and write in my journal about futures I'd never have. I was convinced I would kill myself one day so that I could join him. We would, and I would go to sleep thinking about dying. I thought that if I died, Kurt and I could hold hands and scream as loud as we could, because we were in pain. We'd scream until we couldn't. We'd live in the clouds and slowly sink in and sleep there, never letting go of each other. But days kept passing and I was still alive. Eventually I stopped thinking about death so much but nothing ever felt permanent anymore. I'm not like them, but I can pretend. The sun is gone, but I have a light. The day is done, but I'm having fun. I think I'm dumb, or maybe just happy. I think I'm just happy. Imaginary flame, gone.